In every single cell of your body, there is a tiny power plant. They are working constantly throughout your life to produce things that your body needs to function. These power stations are called mitochondria, and they take responsibility for a large part of your metabolism. And we need metabolism to make energy, which is essential for life. And we also need metabolism to generate building blocks that we need to continuously replace components of our bodies. And we also need building blocks when we grow and when we are injured or affected by disease. Thus, a properly functioning metabolism is of great importance for you and your body. But sometimes there is something that goes awry. As you come into being, your body builds itself from blueprints stored in your genes. But if there are errors in the drawing, it becomes difficult to build as planned. Imagine trying to put together a bookcase with instructions that are misleading. In the worst cases, this leads to genetic diseases. And the long-term aim is to be able to design new treatments. But you cannot do that unless you know exactly where the problem is and why the disease occurs, if you want to find something that compensates. In order to accomplish this, Anna Waddell has created an entire system consisting both of research and medical care. And it begins here at the CMMS, Center for Inherited Metabolic Diseases, at Karolinska Hospital in Stockholm. Here, samples from all of Sweden come to Anna Waddell and her colleagues for investigation. What they are looking for are signs of monogenic metabolic diseases, congenital disorders that affect metabolism. Thanks to previous research, it is sometimes possible to make a diagnosis directly, but in many cases, it is not so easy. And when we are working with monogenic diseases, we are looking for one mutation among three billion bases of DNA. So it's really a needle in a haystack. This assignment requires looking extremely carefully at the samples, which happens here at the SciLife lab. Here, one can bring forth the genetic code from a patient's sample in just three days something that was completely impossible just a couple of years ago. Our research has taken a big step forward thanks to new technology, technology for analyzing our genome. So previously we could study one gene at a time, but now we can study the whole human genome in one step, containing about 20,000 genes and 3 billion building blocks. And once the genome is mapped, one can begin figuring out which gene is not working properly. This, however, is not particularly easy. So many metabolic diseases affect the brain, and the brain is very sensitive, and also the brain cannot heal once it's become damaged. And it's a problem that we cannot take a sample from a patient, for instance. And that's where we need to use models. One of the methods is to look at fruit flies. Fruit flies in particular reproduce extremely fast, which is very useful when researching genetic diseases. Instead of examining people, researchers test modifications to the genes in fruit flies and observe if resulting damage is similar to that of the patient's illnesses. When the connection between a gene and a disease is found, they begin to understand how the disease works and then send the findings back to other parts of the team who in turn begin to develop a treatment for that particular disease. And one example is a disease we found in a little girl who had a very severe brain damage. She had no white matter in her brain. And we could identify a novel gene and link it to her disease show that it caused her disease, and we could exactly describe the pathway 
that was disrupted. This is why working in this way, with research and healthcare in cooperation, is a very important part of Anna Waddell's work. And this also gives us hints for other areas of research. And by that we learned both how the brain normally makes myelin, and we could also understand that by adjusting her diet, we could compensate and reverse a pathway. And we also know that this same gene is implicated in autism. We know it's severely disrupted in this patient, but it seems to be slightly involved in autism. So maybe we can find some patients with autism who would benefit from the same treatment. Mm -hmm.